Oh, hello, hello, making a video with the Papa Dog together. Yes, Papa Dog and I together forever. Okay. I'm reading a book right now, The Pale King by David Foster Wallace. And fairly in the beginning there, he talks about a little boy named Leonard Starcheck. It is a, it's a fiction book, of course, it's a fiction novel, but it depicts humanity at its worst. And so little boy Leonard is super caring, generous, it's an exaggeration of kindness and exuberance and accommodating everyone and giving and giving and giving and giving. And the school principals and uh, the, the school principal men and two-thirds or so of the entire school begin to hate that boy and it just gets worse and worse and worse. The more he gives, the more kindness and exuberance and, and giving, giving, giving and creating festivals and for everyone with free drinks and so on and so on and so on. Um, the more he gives, the more the, the people are hating him. And so it just, this story just struck me and then towards the end of these couple of pages he dis describes that when he was about 10 or something or 11 um, people ganged up on him in the school's restroom and almost killed him. He had to be going to the emergency room and he had to be all patched back together and um, and then he still wouldn't give the police the names. He knew the names. He knew these people that that tortured him, and he wouldn't give the police the names because he cared so much about them. He didn't want them to go to prison. Then, when he came out of the hospital, which took a long time for him to recover, then he wrote a letter of apology <laughs> to those perpetrators and said, "Whatever I may have said that upset you, that." where you, f you felt insulted or hurt because he just can't wrap his mind around why they would possibly do this. So he is to always think in terms of what would, in, in the way that he can possibly wrap his mind around why they would do su such thing, right? And I kind of work that way as well, you know? which irritates my husband because you know, we've always had debates over this. My husband's saying, well, you are, oh, you're, try, you're trying to look at it from the way, you, oh, you, the only way you could possibly understand something like this or, or, or tentatively understand it. It's, it's like it's, 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 a, it's a stretch to understand this kind of behavior, right? So for me in particular. That's why I've studied psychology. That's why I'm chasing this thing. I want to know. I want to understand this, you know. So I need, uh, that's why, you know, that's why I want to talk to people about this. I want to know what is it that makes you so, so, such a violent person, so cold and all of this. So, so what is it? I would like to talk to Teal Swan about this. I would like to ask her, what is it that caused her perpetrator to act like this? What is it that causes these people? What, what, why? Jealousy? Maybe. You know, because Teal Swan had extrasensory abilities as a child already and out there in Idaho, Utah, that these regions, there, there are some people that are really not right in the head. So, and, and they will see this little girl and they go, oh, a woman is not, a girl, a female is not supposed to have this kind of ability. Only men are allowed to have those kind of abilities. She must be a witch. So, you know, this fundamentalist, this extreme religiousness, this, this, a total insanity that these people have out there in, in those rural areas. You know, the, the enclave type of behavior where it's almost um, 
incest of thought, you know, th thoughts that are creating incest with each other, that, uh, that are incestually enclaved, perpetuated, and, and, and accumulated. It's an accumulation of, of thoughts that create more of the same worse thoughts and they, they, they snowball each other into into extreme insanity. People need to know this and I need to become aware about this. This is insane, okay? What the, what religious people are doing around the whole world, the, the Muslims too, every, this insanity, yes? Do we get this? I hope we. Re I hope this is really crystal clear. Okay, that religion is insanity. Okay, as uh, Dr. Arthur Janoff said, religion is psychosis institutionalized, okay? and it becomes more and more institutionalized and more and more insane, and more and more enclaved. The further people are away from any kind of other influence, worldly influence, or other thoughts, other schools, other philosophies, other approximations, other, yeah, just another approach. So when they're like completely concentrated into this one insane approach of whatever, Christianity or Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses or Muslims or whatever it is. so. Then it just, then it becomes, as I would call it, it in brain incestuous. Okay. So when there's just no more of, 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 of a thought gene pool left, other than the, co the concentrated enclave that these people exist in, and they're not even allowed to talk to anyone outside of that religious enclave. So. I want to make this very, very clear th so that people understand this. Okay. Don't make any mistakes about this. Religion is a bus coming towards you and gonna run you over. Okay. Use the last two cents of intelligence and snap out of it. Walk away from it. Okay. So I gotta charge my video. I'm, I'm gonna make part two. Okay. Take care. Bye bye.